Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. Informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. Phones are open at 559-656-0317. Questions can be submitted at questions at insurancehour.com. Of course, we are talking all things insurance. Give us a call, shoot us an email. As a matter of fact, today, we are going to be going through calls that have come in. We are going to be going through emails that have come in. So remember, if you want your call read on the air, let us know. If you don't, let us know. If we don't hear either way, we're going to assume you're okay letting the call be put on the air. So, so there, be sure to let us know, fair warning. Let's dive right in and we'll listen to the first call that we had come in and voicemail that's left. Let's listen to it and then we'll go through and uh, answer the best, uh, answer the question the best we can. Hi, uh, this is uh, Tamara, Tamara Ford calling. Um, I have a question uh, about uh, what coverages maybe my, my condo policy has. Um, I'm having some work done in my condo, and I know when I had a house and I had a homeowner insurance, I had uh, something called workers' comp coverage. So uh, when if I had somebody in the house, if something happened, I, I knew they they would be covered. Uh, but I don't know. Do, do condo policies also have that same coverage? So uh, I can have somebody work in the house and not have to worry if something happens to them, uh, please let me know. Um, thank you. All right. Uh, great question. Uh, question has to do with workers' compensation. And I understand that she's concerned because she understands or believes that most homeowners policies will include workers' compensation, which would cover incidental work that's being done on your home. And she's looking to find out, does her condominium owner's policy have that coverage as well? It's a great question. Just a little bit of background. In the state of California, for example, homeowner's insurance policies do have to offer workers' comp insurance. More than just offer, they are supposed to actually include that coverage. Now, that could be for a housekeeper. It could be for a gardener. It could be for someone that lives in. Just depends. And the type of exposure you have has to do with the premium you're going to pay. But... In California, property insurance is supposed to offer workers' comp insurance as part of the product. Now, do condominium owners' policies have that same requirement, and do renters' insurance policies have that same requirement? The answer is yes. Now, having said that, that does not mean necessarily that your policy does have that coverage. Should is a far cry from have. So what you want to do is take a look at your policy and look for that coverage. Look for where it literally says workers' compensation and be sure that, in fact, that coverage does exist because it should be there, but if you don't see it, it's something you have to request, go ahead and do it. Also, if you do happen to have a policy with a non-admitted insurance company, they are not uh, they are not allowed to offer workers' comp insurance on their policies in California. So it gets a little bit complicated in the event that you are having work done and you want to be sure that you're maintaining the proper coverage, that you have workers' compensation included on your product policy that you have in general. So best answer is double check your policy, be sure it's there. And I give you kudos for knowing that that is something that you should have on your policy. Most people don't realize that workers' compensation is not the same thing as liability insurance. It's specific. So Thank you so much for that call. Hopefully that answers your question. If uh, you need more specifics, feel free to reach out again, 559-656-0317. And let's jump into the next voicemail that's left. Yes. uh, Hi, this is Juliet. And um, I'm kind of panicking. Uh, We just received a letter from uh, State Farm telling us that our homeowner policy is not going to be renewed. I don't even know where to start. We've been with them for so long. Um, I Again, I just would like some information on where to start, what we can do to, to replace that uh, policy. And uh, um, again, I'm 
starting to feel panicky. So any information on where to start or how to try to find another policy is really appreciated. Thank you. Well, I just have to say, those two callers sounded the same. Was it just me? They sounded the same. Listen, if you have more than one question, just ask. You don't have to call in more than once. You don't have to change your name. I'm happy to answer as many questions as you have. So be comfortable. Now, to answer your question, you're talking about being non-renewed by State Farm. And in California, there was a large bulk of policies that were, in fact, non-renewed by State Farm. Interestingly enough, they also have recently requested a pretty significant rate increase. Now, what does all of this translate into? Well, State Farm has about 25% of the property insurance market share in the state of California, which is a lot. It's a big chunk for one insurance company. And because of that, they are suffering the most when it comes to what's happening with these regulations that are impacting insurance carriers' ability to make a profit and be able to stay solvent. So what we're seeing is State Farm contracting to some extent. They're trying to limit the exposure that they have in California, get more of a grip on which types of risks they do have. And most importantly, they want to be sure that the types of risk they have, they do have sufficient money to pay for claims. Now, there's a company called AM Best. AM Best is a private company that rates the financial solvency of insurance companies. They go through a pretty sophisticated process to do that. And AM Best has actually lowered State Farm from an A rating to a B rating, which is significant. You don't see a lot of large carriers with a B rating. Keep in mind also that the ratings don't just go A, B, C. They stay A plus, A, A minus, B plus. So by the time you get to a straight B, you're pretty far down there. So I would say... If you have the ability to find another policy, obviously you want to start looking sooner than later because State Farm is not going to keep that policy. If you've received the non-renewal notice, you should believe it. They're not going to let you appeal it. You are not going to be able to keep that policy. Now, the insurance market is very tight. I suggest you start looking for policies sooner than later. Don't wait. Don't wait until 10 days before your policy non-renews. Start looking right now. And if you are able to find something Right now, I would buy the new policy right now and look to cancel the State Farm policy rather than waiting until the time comes when it expires. We've got more questions, more voicemails coming up. This is Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman. We will be back in a flash. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when, they can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it. Prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. We are talking all things insurance. If you have questions, please give us a call at 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you want help right away, you can dial pound 250 from your cell phone, use the keyword insurance, and you will be transferred to an agent that can help you. We are taking call-ins today, and we are going over voicemails that have been left on our system, as well as going through questions that were emailed to us as well. So just so you know, we are and we do go through these things. We take it very seriously. We have gone through two so far and a handful of other things. Let me go ahead and get to the third voicemail of the day. Here we go. Hey, Carl. Thanks for taking my call. Um my insurance, my auto insurance with Allstate is going up 20%. And I don't know about you, but 
I didn't get a 20% bump in my income in the last year. So I'm wondering what to do. Is it worth shopping around? Do I just pay it and eat hot dogs for the rest of the month? Um, I would love some insight and help. Thank you. Well, I like hot dogs. So I don't know if uh, if I should just say, yeah, eat the hot dogs and go from there. All right. This is a, this is a tough one. Right now, auto insurance prices are at an all-time high everywhere. This is in every state. This is across the board. And the reason we're seeing this is is not even that complicated. Number one, we are looking at, as you've heard and are tired of hearing, I'm sure, record inflation. Everything just costs more money in general. So it would make sense. Your insurance is going to cost more as well since insurance policies are buying all the stuff that now costs more money because of inflation, right? But that's not really the only thing that we're seeing with auto insurance. Auto insurance is being impacted by, believe it or not, the supply chain that was created during COVID is still plaguing us, still. I I don't even like saying it, it bothers me so much, but it's a real thing. I see it every day talking with claims adjusters. I see it every day dealing with clients. It's not just a thing that people are claiming, it is actually still a thing. Now, why this is happening? Above my pay grade, I don't know. You would think after a number of years, the system would sort of work itself back. It has not. It still takes on average 10 to 20 days to get a lot of parts for cars, 10 to 20 days. Whereas those parts used to either be available immediately or available to be shipped within a day or two, we are still far beyond that time frame. Now that's going to mean more expensive costs for the parts as well, because you can imagine if you used to have to pay $500 to get a part, If that part now takes two weeks to get, there are probably other people that are trying to get that part as well. That's part of the reason for the delay. So the manufacturer can increase the price because the demand is high. When the demand is high, the prices go up. Mind you, you can't just go and get a part for a Toyota from anywhere. You're going to have to get it from, wait for it, Toyota. Now there are some off brand parts that you can get in certain circumstances, but for the most part, and what most people want is they are going to want to get the parts for their car from the manufacturer. Expensive, a long time to get it. The next thing that's impacting auto insurance rates right now, and your Allstate policy, as you're describing, is electric vehicles. Electric vehicles are still in their infancy. And because of that, because of the way they're designed, because of the way the bodies are designed, mind you, there's a lot of times we don't realize that just because a vehicle is electric, if that's not the only part of the car that's different. You're not getting the exact same car and they just take out the mo- the engine and they put in a motor. That's not how it works. Electric cars are built completely different. They have a different type of material. They have different crash site. They have different, bo- I mean, it, it's a totally different ball game. There's a reason why Tesla, the Model S, was one of the first cars that was so safe that they actually had to create a new category for that level of safety because it was so far beyond anything else they had seen. Nothing that's that extraordinary, but when these cars are built, because they have more space in them, they're actually able to focus in a lot of points on safety, crash zones, things like that. It's one of the reasons that that car happens to have such amazing safety records as far as impact goes. Now, electric cars also tend to take even longer to get parts for especially if you're looking at some of the more popular ones, again, like Tesla, to get a part for a Tesla could take months, plural, with an S. I have also had clients that have had to wait several months to get parts for other types of electric vehicles as well, like BMW. It's just one of those things. They just have not built up the infrastructure and the manufacturer's end to be able to have that many parts in the wild. Plus, if you're looking to get parts for a a Camry, let's say, I like Toyota apparently, you're going to get parts for a Camry There are lots of them potentially out there in comparison to how many parts are there for a Chevy Bolt, right? They've been making them a lot longer. There are aftermarket parts that are available. There are parts in the, um, I almost said the graveyard, uh, in the impound yard where they can possibly go to get parts that aren't damaged and be used. On the newer cars, they simply don't have the history to be able to have as many parts available for them to be able to have access to them to fix these vehicles. So you're looking at a situation where parts are so expensive because number one, they're in shortage and number two, they're so difficult to get. 
And finally, one of the things that we're seeing, which is causing auto insurance rates to go up so high, is simply the accident frequency and the severity. For some reason, since the pandemic, as a country, as drivers in general, we get an F. The number of accidents that we're having has gone up dramatically. Not a little bit, a lot. For whatever reason, maybe it's distracted driving, maybe people have forgotten how to drive on some level, I don't know. All I can tell you is I see the actual data, I see the stats, and I also see my phone ringing, I see the claims, and I hear it from the industry groups, claim frequency has gone up dramatically. On top of that, claim severity has gone up. Because we have these cars that now can go zero to 60 in three seconds, guess what? That's a lot of torque, it's a lot of power. And that car can have a big accident really fast. So an accident that might have been small to medium is now large to catastrophic. And finally, it wouldn't be fair to not say that the labor costs have gone up dramatically because in the past, again, we would simply replace the bumper or hammer out a few dents. And now we can't do that. We have to replace the bumper because it has cameras, it has LIDAR, it has sensors, and we have to have a highly trained technician put that bumper on and be sure that it's calibrated properly to work with the vehicle's computer. All of these things put together are making auto insurance rates significantly higher. So to answer your question, you can shop around and see if there's a better company that will offer you a less expensive rate on your auto insurance, but I would not be surprised if you find that the carrier you have now is indicative of what the actual cost is going to be. But again, I like hot dogs, so maybe that is the solution. Eat the hot dogs and wait, because things will get better as time goes by. We'll take some more of these calls and we'll take more listener questions right after this break. This is Insurance Hour and I am Carl Sussman. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. We are talking all things insurance. If you've missed any part of this show, you do not want to miss any of it. Jump online, search for Insurance Hour. You'll find out how to get copies of the show. Go back, listen to the part that you've missed. We're on YouTube, we're on every podcast you can imagine. Just go out there, search for Insurance Hour, go to the website, insurancehour.com. All the links are there as well. So we are taking your questions, 559-656-0317. You can call or text. You can also send your email to questions at insurancehour.com. If you do have an immediate issue you need handled, you can also dial pound 250 on your cell phone, use the keyword insurance, and then you will be transferred to an agent that can help you. Now, we've been taking some voicemails, and I thought maybe we'd go through some of the emails that have been sent in now as well. Again, I'm just reading these, and I'm trying to read them on the spot for the first time. I've really only skimmed through them. So if some are a little bit edgy, or some don't make sense, or I skip some, don't say I haven't planned ahead. I've deliberately wanted to be in a position where I don't have a lot of time to go and research or plan ahead or, or make it you know unrealistic. So I'm just going through them as they've come. Okay, here we go. I am extremely disappointed, what a great start. I am extremely disappointed to see that my home insurance premium has significantly increased without any prior warning or clear explanation. This sudden change is quite upsetting and I demand an immediate detailed justification for this increase. This is an unhappy person. Let me go through, let me address each of those points. It you, you definitely will get premium increases for home insurance right now. It's, it's what's happening because we're in an environment where there is very little to no competition. So the carriers that are still offering coverage, the rates are continuing to go up. This is what happens when you're in the opposite of a competitive marketplace. 
you have higher prices versus lower. Now, you mentioned that there has been no prior warning or explanation. The carrier will let you know at the renewal point. So if your policy is renewing, you will be notified before the renewal date of what the new premium is. If you're not, then check with your insurance carrier broker or the carrier directly. Something's fishy because by statute, the insurance carriers must provide you with that renewal with the premium before it renews. Or if they do provide it after, they also must give you the ability to not pay a penny on that policy should you decide not to renew it. So you should be getting that upfront warning. As far as a clear explanation as to why, I spent hours and hours and hours explaining why premium increases have happened on homeowners insurance policies. Very little of it actually has to do with you specifically, very little. The entire industry is dealing right now with higher costs and lack of competition. So all of the rates that we're seeing are going up. Now, if there's a specific reason that your premium has gone up, perhaps there was a claim, perhaps something was done that you weren't supposed to do, uh, maybe your risk exposure changed, right? You put in a pool you didn't used to, you have a dog that likes to bite people, things like that, then the insurance carrier should notify you Listen, you're, you have been changed from one risk to another, therefore your premium is. If the letter doesn't specifically say that, and it probably won't, it might say something along the lines of change in risk provided or change in initial risk profile, something, some legal jargon, then you can call your insurance company or your agent or your broker and ask them, say, well, what changed? What gives? And find out because you do have a right to know, and you do have a right if you can make changes to some of those things to get the premium back to where it was, you have the ability to do that, then you should be able to as well. All right, next question. Uh, I am writing to express my frustration with the auto insurance claims process. It has been weeks without any substantial update and the lack of communication is unacceptable. I expect a resolution to my claim much quicker than this and demand a status update. This sounds like it's going to an ins like it's supposed to be going to uh, a carrier or or something along those lines. But insurance auto insurance claims are tough. They really are. I actually uh, my sister was in the auto in the claims department for for wow two decades. And I man I've heard stories, lots of stories. And I have to tell you the claims adjusters they have a rough job. They they are dealing with people at their worst, right? I mean you've had an accident or some type of a loss. And these are the people you have to deal with all day long. Probably people that are not at their best, right? They're upset. They're dealing with something bad that's happened. Now, having said that, they do have certain responsibilities. They should be keeping in touch with you. They should be giving you updates on the claim. They should be giving you updates on what's happening. And this might surprise you to know, a claims adjuster is not just dealing with your claim. They're dealing with a lot of claims. And if you're a claims adjuster, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me these days, how many claims on average do you have open at any one time? Because I have a sneaky suspicion that that number keeps getting higher and higher and higher because it costs less for an insurance carrier to have less people handling the claims. So what do they do? They can get rid of claims adjusters and they can just put more claims under the fewer adjusters that are there. And as long as that is not impacting the service that the clients are receiving, service to the extent of what the insurance carrier is trying to provide, then it's okay. Doesn't sound like you're getting great service. So I would certainly find out what's going on with your claim. I would send an email similar to what you sent to me and send it into the adjuster and ask them, say, is there a supervisor I can speak with? Is there someone I can talk to? I'm feeling like I'm getting lost in the shuffle somewhere. And worse comes to worse, if you're still not getting a response, if you've tried, Go ahead and you can reach out to the Department of Insurance. There are lots of forms and links right on the main page you can go to if you're having a problem with your claim. Believe me, if the Department of Insurance gets it, they shoot a note off to that insurance company. You will hear from your insurance adjuster right away. Chances are you'll probably get assigned a new claims adjuster because the one you're working with probably just got a swift backhand from their supervisor. Not literally. So... That's the process I would go through in the event you're having problems getting your claim resolved or you're feeling like you're not getting updated. All right. Next email. I'm increasingly concerned about repeated denials of coverage with my medical treatments. Oh, that's it. And they put their contact information, which I am not going to share with you. 
Health insurance is tough, guys. Health insurance is really, really tough. And, and I'm not going to even pretend that I have a good answer to this because we, um, I should say we, I, I've ho- offered health insurance in the past and I stopped offering it because the plan started to get so difficult and so expensive. I just personally didn't feel comfortable offering them. It's tough for me to get behind a product that I don't like and that I think is overpriced and that I think is not providing good value. And unfortunately, if I sat here today with all the money in the world and someone said, go buy yourself the best health insurance policy out there, I could go spend money. It's still not going to be a great policy. So I I am genuinely sorry to hear that you're having so many problems with getting denials for treatment. That scares me because I hear treatment and I'm thinking that something that you probably need to get done is not getting done. So I would push back. And if you are not able to get some, not able to get this handled, you might need to seek legal counsel because the health insurance carriers right now, and again, not dissing anybody, are in a tough place and the products are not great. Let's take some more voicemails and emails when we come back. Do you need homeowner's insurance? Has your previous insurance company left the state, non-renewed your policy, or maybe they just raised your premium to an amount that you simply can't afford? Whatever the situation, we can help. Just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with an agent who can assist you right away. Or if you prefer, you can visit us online at insurancehour.com forward slash quotes. Whether you're looking for homeowner's insurance or auto insurance, we'll send the best options straight to you. So what are you waiting for? Simply dial pound 250 and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with a live agent to help provide competitive quotes for your homeowner's insurance or auto insurance. Don't get caught unprepared. Insure what matters with an insurance company you can trust and with a premium that you can afford. Don't put off until tomorrow what you should have done yesterday. Simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. We are talking all things insurance, and we have been. If you've missed any part of this show, you want to go back and find it. Check online. Check it out as a podcast. Check it out on YouTube. Just search for Insurance Hour, and you will find it. Believe me, we are pretty much everywhere, and you'll want to go find the show that you've missed half of so far or more today because we have just had a ton of information taking all of the voicemails and emails that we've received and going through and answering them one by one, as I've promised. And you can be next. The phone number to call in is 559-656-0317. You could also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need immediate help, you could also dial pound 250 on your cell phone, get connected to an agent that can help you right away. Okay, I think we're going to jump into our next voicemail. Let's hear it. Hi, Carl Sussman. I listened to your broadcast about this Catherine Black Spear on SB8. It is despicable. You encourage this kind of uh, anti-constitutional Second Amendment rights, and I'll never watch your program again. And we'll try to vote her out of office, too. We'll listen to your program. Excuse me. Okay. This appears to be in response to an interview that I did with uh, Catherine Blakespear uh, regarding some re- legislation regarding gun registrations, I believe. Clearly, this person is unhappy. I, I understand. There are certain things they say never to talk about. Is that, I think it's what, politics, guns, and God, I think, is the, is the big three. And this is definitely hitting one of those. I understand people's concern and their frustration and their anger and everything in between when it comes to any type of legislation and regulations surrounding guns. I will not get political about it. I will simply continue to do what I do, which is talk to people that are talking about insurance-related products. This was some legislation that was being discussed. It had to do, if I remember correctly, with an additional registry or an additional something that was required by property insurance carriers to provide information to the state of California regarding people that have guns. Again, I'm going off of memory, so forgive me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure part of the issue had to do with uh, homeowner's insurance and the exposure that they have and a homeowner's policy being able to offer a discount for someone 
that does not have guns versus someone that does. The rationale being someone that has a gun is more likely to be injured or have a liability exposure because of it versus someone who doesn't. And I'm generalizing in, in a big way. So again, I appreciate your feedback. And uh, let's move on to the next voicemail. Uh, yeah, I'm listening here in uh, the Sacramento area to your program. And uh, I like how you're calling out the uh, basically inflation on the wards. You can't drive down a freeway anywhere without seeing uh, basically a billboard for an insurance agent, uh, excuse me, a, an attorney. We're basically fishing for clients. So let's face it, that does add to the cost of insurance. So we need kind of basically a return to reality. Though I'll give you an example of how tough things are. Deer jumped in front of my car at 55 miles an hour. I'm going the speed limit. Deer whacked my car. It cost $13,000. That doesn't help. So if you want to make a comment about things, get, get to Department of Fish and Wildlife to do deer deprivation because up where I live, here in the cool area, there's probably at least one of those a week on the side of the road. And everybody's losing a load of money. Talk to you later. Wow. All right. I, I, I cut off before the phone number came in. Obviously, I don't want to share that. Um, this is in regard to a show that uh, we did talking about one of the reasons that insurance premiums are going up is because litigation costs are becoming a larger part of insurance claims in general. This is not an opinion. It's just a, it's just an actuarial fact. And what this caller was talking about was the fact that he is seeing a lot of signs that are, as he says, fishing for, for clients. And that's, and well, yeah, that's going to impact the overall premium because again, insurance carriers will be the first to tell you that premium, that a claim that has an attorney involved will cost more money, whether it's because the attorney is getting paid. Therefore, in order to settle the claim, they have to settle it for more or the insurance carrier has to pay more or decides to pay more because the attorney is doing a good job fighting for the client. It's it's a little bit of everything and, 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 and all of that mixed together. But as the client points out at the end of the day, it does mean higher claims and higher claims do translate eventually into higher premiums. We could have the debate about, well, we wouldn't need attorneys to do that if the carriers would just do, quote unquote, the right thing. We could talk about that or not. It happens. It doesn't. Carriers are just like anything else. They're run by people. Sometimes the claims adjuster will do the right thing. Sometimes they might not do the right thing. There's just no easy answer to that. But I appreciate your call. Let's do another voicemail that we had come in. Hi, this is Mike with Semaphore Tax. I have a question related to the California insurance problems. Um, we have a lot of clients that are having complications buying homes now because of the insurance situation, and it's pretty well known that there's a crisis in insurance in California. And we we seemingly have got to this spot because the California regulators won't allow insurance companies to charge what's necessary to run a functional insurance operation in the state. So how come nobody's talking about the reality that, in California at least, it seems that insurance is being treated as a utility and not a business? And in my perspective, we're in this crisis because the situation didn't work and effectively was broken, having the state dictate what insurance carriers can or cannot charge. So it seems to me somebody should be talking about the reality that California is treating it as a utility and maybe the conversation needs to change in the first place because I don't see how changing how and what insurance carriers are allowed to charge is going to solve something when that's what got us in this problem in the first place. Anyway, thanks for your insights. Well, um, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Listen, I want to tackle that call as soon as I come back from a break because I don't want to get cut off right through. So let's take our last break of the day. And when we come back, we will tackle that. Why doesn't the legislature do what he believes they should be doing? This is Insurance Hour. I am Carl Sussman. Thank you again for being here. Call in with your questions at 559-656-0317 or send them in to questions at insurancehour.com. Lastly, immediate help. Pound 250, use keyword insurance. We will be back in a flash.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the magic podcast show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Do you need homeowner's insurance? Has your insurance company left the state, non-renewed your policy, or raised the premium to a level you simply can't afford? We can help. Dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote. We will connect you with an agent that can help you right away. Again, that is pound 250 on your mobile phone. And when asked, use the keyword insurance quote or visit us online at insurancehour.com forward slash quotes. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour and I'm your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. We are talking all things insurance. We're going through your questions and I'm giving answers today. You can call in anytime at 559-656-0317 or you can submit your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, you can dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and get transferred to an agent that can help you right away. We have gone through a bunch of questions so far. We've got a bunch more to go, and we will try and tackle as many of them as we can. If not, we'll tackle them on a future show. If you missed any of the show so far, go back and find it. It's definitely worth hearing. You can find it as a podcast. You can find it on YouTube. Just search for Insurance Hour and you'll find us. So before this break, we heard from someone that was calling in asking, why is it that in California, the insurance business in general is being treated as a commodity versus an actual business? And I believe the other main point was that why aren't the legislators doing something to try and and change that? Well, fortunately, uh, all of those things are being dealt with right now. Certainly not as fast as we would like them to be, that's for sure. I know we would all like to see this situation over quickly because people are suffering. We're suffering with higher rates. We're suffering with less competition. We're suffering a lot as consumers in California. As far as it being seen as a commodity, I don't disagree with you. I think that people believe that they're entitled to an insurance policy. And I believe people should have an insurance policy, but I also don't believe that we can take a private carrier, a private insurance company, one that is owned by individuals that have a profit motivation and force them to do something, especially if potentially what you're forcing them to do is meaning they're going to lose money. So I can see both sides, right? In California, there's something that people talk about, about having an insurance mandate. And an insurance mandate means that you must offer insurance. And people say, we need to have that because everyone has a right to insurance. Well, it turns out we actually do have an insurance mandate. It's called the California Fair Plan. Now, what happens is if the private companies that are offering insurance in California cannot or decide not to, for whatever reason, not offer a policy to you, you have, as a last resort, the ability to go to the California Fair Plan and you can get fire insurance there. The interesting part of this, and this is a little known fact, would you like to know who's actually paying and putting the money in to the California Fair Plan? I bet you don't know. I bet you'll guess wrong because it's shocking. It's the private insurance companies. So all of these companies that are saying that, for at least right now, they're saying they cannot afford the exposure. They're not be able to underwrite and collect sufficient premium. On the back end, they are still writing insurance and paying the bills and claims for losses from the California Fair Plan. It's kind of crazy. You're saying, well, I don't get it. If they can't, why are they? Well, that's the way the law works. And that's not something that's looking to change anytime soon because the industry has been able to work with that because for the most part, the California Fair Plan handled and, and maintained a very, very small market share of all homes in California in, in the low single digits, 2%, 3%, not a big deal. 
Uh, to, if you want to get an idea of perspective, Florida, who has a completely botched insurance industry, their state-run organization, it's called Citizens, they, they insure more than half, 50% of every property in the state of Florida. Talk about socialized insurance. Of all places, too, right, where things are supposed to be so much more you know, business-friendly, they're in an environment where uh, the state is basically insuring more than half of everyone there. Anyway... So we have a mandate for insurance. If you're not able to get coverage, you are able to go to the FAIR plan. And you should know, again, that on the back end, the FAIR plan is actually paid for by the insurance industry, by the private companies. So what's going to be done about this, right? Why, what are the legislators doing? I've spent many a times visiting the state capitol and talked to legislators that are dealing with this very issue. And I have this conversation. What are we going to do? These are private companies. We can't force them to lose money. The truth is we don't want them to lose money because if they're losing money, how are they going to have money to pay the claims, right? It's a vicious cycle. So what we're dealing with is a situation where the, the regulations, the laws that are currently on the books are so outdated, literally 30 plus years, that they were designed at a time when we didn't have computers that were enabling us to do forecasting, that were enabling us to handle claims, that were enabling us to forecast underwriting and calculate rates and crunch numbers and do all sorts of things. So we were literally at a time when if somebody wanted to write insurance on their home, we would take out a book and look at a printed picture of maps. And by the way, they update this map once a year. If something drastic changes, they would send you an extra page to stick in or swap out. It was called a Thomas Guide. Actually, the creator of Thomas Guide just recently passed away. Um, I, I happened to catch that and thought, wow. Uh, I guess his name was Thomas. So times have changed. And the regulations that were put into place 30 some odd years ago aren't working right now. And I think that's really what's put us in this situation of not being able to have the private companies write insurance and be profitable because both things have to happen, right? We can't make them just write insurance. We have to allow them to write insurance and be profitable. And current regulations and laws, and this will continue, state that insurance premiums need to be adequate but not excessive. That's literally written, adequate but not excessive. So we have protections built in. The industry can't just randomly decide to start throwing out insane premiums and expect people to pay them. First of all, they won't pay them. Second of all, another company would come in and charge less because they could make money at a lower price. And third of all, the Department of Insurance is that stopgap. They are there to prevent carriers from even being allowed to offer those rates. Any rate we're paying has to be going, has to go through the California Department of Insurance. Every rate you're paying for an insurance product in the state of California, someone at the California Department of Insurance looked at it, crunched the numbers, said that this is adequate and not excessive, and approved it, and now you're seeing it. So no one is out there making outlandish amounts of money and just you know cleaning up with it. They can't. The Department of Insurance doesn't permit it. And let's face it, the Department of Insurance is very consumer friendly. Their primary function is to be sure that we have solvent insurance carriers and a healthy competitive insurance environment. And we can get there. The problem is right now, we are not there. We are at the opposite end of that right now. So hopefully things will be turning around soon. I am seeing some definite positive momentum. But again, to answer your question, you are correct. The industry is looked at as a commodity and that is changing. The industry needs to be able to underwrite with the new tools that are available and the new regulations are going to allow for that. So I think that we are going to start to see some changes coming sooner than later. And I, I think I'm going to save your voicemail because it really articulates well a lot of what is going on. And I'd like to listen to it again in six months and see how different the situation might be because I really do believe with some of the things that are coming down the line that we are going to be in a much better position as far as insurance availability and affordability soon. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. We will be back for our final segment right after the break. Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we're prepared to leap, looking under every rock, exploring every avenue. That's not just what we do, it's who we are. 
our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. Solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, it's time to turn to a team that believes in yes and let's make it happen. Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here today. We are talking everything insurance. Everything insurance, I know. It's your biggest dream. You can reach us at 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If it's an emergency, you want an agent right now. You can also grab your cell phone, dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance and be connected to somebody right away. This is our final segment and we have covered a lot of stuff. We've gone through questions and voicemails from people that are tuning into the show. If you've missed any of them, you don't want to. So jump online, search for Insurance Hour, get a copy, subscribe to the podcast or subscribe on YouTube to the show. You'll be able to go back and hear what you've missed and you won't miss any new content coming forward. My goal, as always, is to try and provide you with accurate and timely information that will help you understand your insurance coverage, your insurance carrier, your insurance claim, whatever it might be, just to have everyone more on the same page. So let's finish up with some more questions that we have had submitted from people online. This one says, my disability insurance policy is confusing and not what I understood it to be when I, I think they mean signed up. This lack of clarity is a problem. Disability insurance is a tough one, for sure. Policies are not boilerplate, as they might be closer to boilerplate with auto insurance, right? There are certain types of particular coverages that we expect to see on an auto insurance policy, particular way that that's written out. My most carriers list it that way. Disability insurance does not work that way. It is a lot more individualized by insurance company. It's a lot harder to compare apples to oranges. So if you're looking to purchase disability insurance, or in this case, uh, this person is saying they're confused with what they have, uh, you need to be sure you have someone that really knows what they're doing because the level of competency necessary, and I'm not knocking anybody to offer an auto insurance policy versus a home insurance policy versus a disability policy or a long-term care insurance policy, it tends to be a different level of professionalism, a different level of knowledge is really the right way to put it. So if you're not clear on what's covered on your disability insurance policy, be sure you have someone that you have purchased it from or you can contact the company directly to try and get some help. Because keep in mind that once you have that policy, you have that contract. And if you're not able to get the information that you need directly from your agent, You can always call the insurance company directly. I know of zero disability insurance companies that if a client calls in and says, hey, I'm not getting the answers I need from my agent, will you help me? That will say, nope, sorry, just talk to your agent. They're going to help you because they're going to know that the next thing you're going to do is stop paying your premium. Okay, next email. I am shocked to see my auto insurance spike this renewal period with absolutely no reason, no tickets, no accidents, no anything. I will not read the rest. It gets a little bit ugly. We talked about this a little earlier in the show. Auto insurance rates are going up and they're not just going up in California. They are going up countrywide. This is something that we've been seeing steadily. And in California, we've been seeing it spike a lot faster than we have perhaps in other states because they have been artificially suppressed for a period of time. And now we're sort of seeing that boomerang effect Right, if you pull something and you hold it and you hold it and you hold it and you hold it, you're building up more tension and when finally it has to give, you're going to have a much bigger explosion. And that's really what we're seeing right now in the auto insurance industry is a significant explosion of prices that are going up. Now that's not to say that they're going to continue at this pace, they will not, but we're in an environment where the level of, the number of carriers that are offering coverage is so low There's very little incentive for them to lower rates to compete because there's no one that they're competing with, right? So my best advice with you for you on auto insurance, if you want to shop around a little bit, go for it. Be sure you're comparing as close as you can to apples to apples, but be prepared that the rates are simply going to be higher today than they were several years ago. 
They should not necessarily stay as high as they are today. They should go down a little bit from where we are right now in this environment, but don't expect them to go down to where they were five years ago. We're just not going to see that. We're not living in a five years ago environment due to multiple factors that I talked about earlier in the show. Go back and listen if you missed it because I don't want to make everyone hear it all over again, but I went through it with a pretty, pretty good detail. So auto insurance is going to be more expensive. If you want to do a few things now to try and save money, check your deductibles. You should not be carrying a $500 deductible. If you can carry a thousand or even $1,500 deductible or even higher, do that. I know not everyone has that money in the bank. I completely understand that. But at the end of the day, if an accident that you have is not your fault and the other person has insurance, their insurance policy is going to pay for your damage. So you will not have a deductible. If you have an accident with somebody that is uninsured, assuming you have the correct coverage, your uninsured motorist policy um, portion of your policy, meaning the collision portion, would pay for your damage to your vehicle. And again, if you purchase the coverage correctly, you'll have what's called the waiver of collision coverage. So again, no deductible. So really the only time you would be susceptible to that deductible would be in the event of an accident that's your fault. Maybe you look at it that way. I mean, because you're such a good driver, you would never have an accident that's your fault. And therefore, who cares what your deductible is? It will save you money nonetheless. Interestingly enough, if you go to Kiplinger.com and search for um, Carl Sussman, I recently did an article there about how auto insurance accidents are never your fault. Because I have to tell you, after three decades in this business, I have heard some of the most amazing reasons why you, your accident was not your fault when it clearly was. Anyway, if you go to Kiplinger.com and search, I'm one of their columnists and you'll be able to get some, uh, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get a kick out of it. It's one of my more fun articles, I think. Anyway, that's auto insurance. Again, I, I wish I had a better answer to say other than try and raise the deductibles, make sure the insurance carrier is giving you all of the discounts you're eligible for. Sometimes it helps to actually ask them, say, what discounts do you have? You don't want to call and say, am I getting all the discounts I should? Because that's an easy answer. Yeah, bye. No. Say, can you please give me a list of all discounts that are offered? And then you take the time to go through and look and see, am I getting all of the discounts that I'm eligible for? Mistakes happen. Insurance agents or brokers are human. They're not perfect. Insurance carriers are run by people, ergo, not perfect. So it's possible something could be missed. Or you might see a discount that you're eligible for, but you have never provided information about, so you're not receiving it it's definitely worth taking the time to ask. And with that, I'm going to wrap up today's show. I appreciate all of you for being here with me and learning. I hope that you are getting useful, actionable information that will help you with your insurance policy, that will help you understand the industry in general, that will help you get the most out of your insurance dollar. That sounds really cliche, but that really is my goal. I want everyone to understand as much as they can so they can make the right choices, they can make the right decisions, get the most out of their policy and not have to overpay unless, I hate to say it, unless that's what they choose to do. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Call in anytime, even after hours, 559-656-0317. And I will see you sooner than you think. Take care. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.